Now, in today's session, you will learn about the Complete Rudiments Workbook plus the uh, Complete Supplemental Workbook. So we're going to do these together. Now, each workbook has a handy matching answer book that is identical to the workbook. And this makes marking really quick and easy and honestly saves you hours of time. And I know because I'm a teacher too. <laughs> Now these workbooks are completed together at the same time and prepare students for that RCM Theory Level 8 exam. Now that was previously called the Advanced Rudiments exam, so now it's called Level 8. Now the complete workbooks are designed for the accelerated learner and they're honestly a must-have resource for your teaching studio because it's the all-in-one book. The complete supplemental workbook includes all the theory concepts, the melody writing, and the music history from all the previous levels. UMT Complete Supplemental, LOL, and we are certainly doing that. Listen, organize, learn. A proven step-by-step -step system. And are you ready to LOL? Okay, go ahead and say yes I am in the chat box. We're all together. Uh, awesome. So put a big smile on your face and an LOL in the chat box and let's get started. At UMT we've got you covered and today we're going to talk about the complete supplemental, what's new, plus you definitely will LOL, learn, master techniques, organize, simple steps, listen to music genres, and a UMTC success story from our very special guest, Ultimate Music Theory Certified Teacher, uh, Kamara Hennessy. And by the way, she is definitely a SOLA, as you will see. The Complete Rudiments Workbook contains 12 lessons with a comprehensive review test at the end of each lesson. Now, the Complete Supplemental Workbook correlates to each of the 12 lessons in the Complete Rudiments Workbook with the table of contents outlining the concepts and the music history introduced in each lesson. So we have our overview uh, comparison chart and each lesson correlates. So lesson one, lesson two, three, and so on. The music history introduced in each lesson uh, covers all the levels, including prep and the levels one to eight. And then we've also included that bonus of the uh, level eight theory exam and a special certificate because we want to recognize our students for their accomplishments, right? The complete uh, comparison chart maps out the RCM uh, Level 8 theory concepts with the complete supplemental workbook. And the supplemental workbook pages are indicated with a little star as the new concepts are introduced in the 2016 RCM theory syllabus. Now we've created amazing resources for you and your students to watch all the videos for the history. Plus, if you don't already have the Ultimate Music Theory app, you can see it there on the right at the bottom of the page. You may want to get that. The Ultimate Music Theory app contains over 7,000 flashcards. Sheila and I had an absolute blast putting that together for you, and it includes audio to help you learn faster, and my students absolutely love it. It's definitely something you want to have in your studio, and you can use it um, on your PC, on your uh, mobile device, on your iPad, uh, on, on any electronic device, so it's really, really handy and it syncs all your lessons so you can keep track of your progress. Now whether you are uh, Tito sitting on the piano bench or Sola sharpening your pencil, grab your complete UMT workbooks and get ready to LOL. LOL complete supplemental starts with number one learn master techniques for melody writing. And we'll start with the Complete Rudiments Workbook on page 200. Now here you're learning about the 5-7 chord, a dominant triad plus a minor seventh as used in an authentic cadence. When a dominant seventh chord is used in a perfect cadence, now referred to as an authentic cadence, the fifth note above the dominant may be omitted. The 5-7 chord always contains the added 7th note. And in an authentic cadence, also known as a perfect cadence, when the 5-7 chord is used, the 7th note hugs 
the dominant note, so we can kind of recognize it pretty easy. Say hi <laughs> to my student Carter. Uh, as we review cadences on page 200 of the Complete Rudiments Workbook. And you will notice that I ask a lot of questions so that Carter can verbalize his thought process. Very important. While watching Carter throughout this presentation, I want you to observe his personality. Do you think he's a Sola or a Tito? And I'll reveal the answer a little bit later. But first, let's get started with the Complete Rudiments Workbook, page 200. Here's Carter. Well, we're with Carter today, and he's doing the Complete Supplemental Workbook and the Complete <laughs> Rudiments Workbook. Wow, double dose, Carter. Nice work. I know, they're both thick books, That's right? That's a thick book. They're really thick books. Okay, well, go ahead and open up your Complete Workbook, because today... Uh, and we are on what page, Carter? We're on page 200. Page 200. Oh, my gosh. And we've been talking about authentic cadences and half cadences. And today we're going to take a look at the authentic cadence. So it's also called the perfect cadence. Now, what's different about this? Uh, sort of give me the options here, Carter, on what is an authentic cadence. What do we look for? Well, in an authentic cadence... Uh, typically, the uh, the chords, well, not structure, but the change, it would go from 5-1, so the dominant to the tonic. Right. Or if it's a 5-7 um, a cadence, it'll go from 5-7 to 1. Excellent. Okay, so can you go ahead and play them for me? What key are you playing the first group in? I am playing the first group in D major. D major. So the first one is the authentic cadence as a 5-1. So let's go ahead and hear that one. change that up and play a 5-7-1. So what is the difference between a 5 and a 5-7? Well, in a regular 5 chord, um, there are only typically three notes to it, and it would be the 1, 3, 5. Okay? Well, right. I guess it would be this, because okay. we're in mm -hmm. D. Uh, in the 5-7, we add that minor 7th to it. So it would be more A, C sharp, B, G. Excellent. Good. So when we play the, uh, the cadence here, we just take out the E and play the A, the C, and the G. So we end up with this. And then to the 1. Nice work. All right, so now, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're a good teacher. So now we're going to uh, have a listen to the next one. This is in the key of D minor. So again, we've got a 5-1 cadence. Let's play that one first. Wow, that sounds so different, doesn't it? And then the 5-7 one. Now, I see that there is an uppercase letter for uh, the five, even though we're in a minor key. So when we see the functional chord symbols, what do the uppercase and lowercase stand for? Well, five is always a major key. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're playing in a major key or a minor key. Uh, the five will always be major. Correct. So if you're playing in D major, this is your five. And if you're playing in D minor, this is also your five because of that raised seventh note here. Excellent. But the uh, the tonic changes. Uh, if we have an uppercase I, we're in a major key, and if we have a lowercase I, we're in a minor key. So if we're in a major key, oh, there we go. That would be our uppercase I, but if we're in the minor key, and there's a lowercase level I, the letter I, it would sound more minor. Yeah, really great job. So now we're gonna take a look at melody writing using our um, imperfect, or sorry, our perfect cadences, also called authentic cadences, with the 5 1 and the 5 7 1 chords. Are you ready for that one? I think so. 